to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. As municipal leaders from across Canada gear up for the June Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention in Calgary, there's a buzz. There's a buzz in the air that is returning of the successful mixer hosted by the rural municipalities of Alberta in Toronto. Building off the resounding success of that Toronto FCM convention, the RMA is rolling out the welcome mat here in Calgary, inviting delegates from across Canada to join them on the opening night, June 6th, for an experience like no other. But what's the aim for the grand gathering, you might ask? Well, to put it simply, RMA aims to showcase rural Alberta in all its splendor, offering a glimpse into the unique character and challenges faced by rural municipalities. It's an opportunity to shine a spotlight on the heartbeat of rural Canada. And who better to lead the discussion than President of RMA, Paul McLaughlin, and Councillor Neil Como of Sturgeon County, a seasoned voice on the FCM Board of Directors. Together, Along with me, we'll unpack the significance of this event, delving into why it's making a return for a second year running. What drives the passion behind this initiative and what do they hope will be the key takeaways from the delegates fortunate enough to attend? Now, it's worth noting that this episode was recorded live at the March-Spring RMA convention in Edmonton, so it will be an audio roundtable discussion only, offering insights straight from the heart of the action. So without further ado, this is Municipal Affairs. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Neil, Paul, thank you so much for doing this. I uh, want to talk about the upcoming FCM conference. One of the big things that is the big event that kicks off the uh, sort of unofficial start of FCM is the RMA uh, sort of reception, welcome reception, which RMA is going to be hosting this year. Can you just talk to me about how this came about and why it's the second year now? Yeah, no, I think that we actually had uh, some member-driven opportunity in, in Toronto last year. Wanted to le really leverage that and take advantage of this being actually out west. Uh, it, we, we've heard rumors that Calgary is one of the highest turnouts for FCM. Uh, people want to come to Calgary and, and spend some time seeing the mountains and the, and the area around there. So we thought, you know what, let's double down. But let's also take advantage and connect to our roots, which was the members that had sparked it uh, prior. So having Neil along and, and some of those member municipalities that got this going in their great success in Toronto, we wanted to leverage that too as well. So as chair of the Rural Caucus for FCM, Neil, what does this mean for you to have the organization here, uh, members descending upon uh, uh, Calgary from the 6th to the 9th of June? What does it mean for rurally for Alberta? Well, I think rurally we can we can get the message out on what, what we are and what we are not. Um, you know, the GDP that, that rurally brings to this country is huge and people don't even know what we have in Alberta. Um, you know, the genesis of this last year was just to try and educate people and, and both ways. We need to learn from Eastern Canada and the rest of Canada, I should say, shouldn't single anyone out, the rest of Canada on what they feel Alberta is and it was just to try and educate them on what we are and, and move forward and, and work together because as as a you know coast to coast to coast if we can have everyone there which we did last year we had every province and territory represented it they were in attendance um you know 520 ish people the the 13 municipalities that started this um i myself like i'm grateful that rma is you know footing the bill per se this year but i want to see where it goes next year and the year after and to continue that educational process 
So for RMA's perspective, what do you hope that people will take away from this opening session? Is there going to be speakers? Is there going to, what, what's happening during the night's festivities? Well, I think we are looking at entertainment and, and we like to keep the, it's really the dialogue too. And there will be speeches because politicians can't help themselves. But, but I think there's, it's the hallway opportunities to have the conversations. It's the ability for you to connect with people from other places. Uh, we really have seen uh, huge connections between rural anywhere Canada. Um, we have the same stories and, and the same issues and, and really bridging those and being solution focused I think is really what we'll get out of there. So we'll be entertained, there'll be some funky drinks, uh, I think there'll be a lot of fun and, and at the same time dialogue which is the best part of FCM is chatting anyways and, and uh, hopefully the speeches are short and the beers are long. So I, I, I'm not speaking out of turn here because I was told off the record but I'm supposed to add, bring this up but I heard there's a unicorn that might be appearing at this year's uh, uh, event. There, uh, there, there is a need to, uh, to withhold the western spirit. Um, having uh, livestock in premises with food, there's been some barriers but we're going to break down those barriers and there's every likelihood that something that's unicorn like may potentially occur probably Probably in the shape of a pony, but we'll see. Uh, I have my wishes, but uh, I'm hoping for the best. So what does it mean for rural Alberta? Because you're showcasing rural Alberta in the heart of one of the largest cities in Alberta, Calgary. So what, what, what rural aspects are we going to see on hand? It, it can be anything rural, which is tourism to, which I know is one of your passions, uh, to, to the energy transformation that's occurring in Alberta. To, to just about anything. Anything rural is what we're trying to educate the people on. And, and well, I think we can showcase everything that we are, but it, and showing how we're also, as Paul said, we're also very similar to other areas of the country. And, you know, getting them to get down to the grassroots and, and realize that what rural can bring to the table and the equation, um, that, that to me is a big thing. I don't know if I, I'll pass no, no, to you, Paul. Like rural remote is rural remote. It doesn't matter where you live in the country. Uh, and then there's north, and then there's northern remote, and they're, they're all varying degrees of the same conversation. And I think that having an understanding that exactly that's it. We live the same, we have the same lifestyle that many other rural folks have. And bringing the urban folks connecting back to our rural roots, I think is a big step. Um, the, the biggest understanding that we need to have is that there's decisions being made from an urban perspective that have rural impacts. And like what? Versa. Do you so, mind me asking? So I think that there's opportunities related to renewables, just the vision of renewables, tremendous opportunities available, but it's the way with which. At the same time, rural Alberta can actually provide uh, resilience from flood or drought uh, by land exchanges. So making those two connections, uh, we, we contribute in the province of Alberta, 28% of the GDP is contributed by 15% of the population. 44% of the capital investment. So we are the driver with a low population, but a high infrastructure requirement, which is much like rural Saskatchewan, much like rural Manitoba and the rest of the rest across Canada. And we've seen so much strength in FCM shifting their conversation to start to address some of these issues that we're, uh, this is like a double down on FCM, let's put it that way. What does it mean for why would I want to come to this event, basically? You talk about the communication and those conversations, and hopefully not the the, the politician uh, conversations, or the speeches aren't long, but the beer are. What does it mean for urban person from Ontario to say, you know what, I want to go to this event? Why would someone want to show up and say, okay, let's see what rural Alberta and the rural perspective has to offer? Well, we picked a fantastic facility. So the Bank and Baron alone is its own attraction, uh, beautiful facility. But on top of that, um, you know what? Any opportunity to meet with interesting people that have that want to tell their story, I would expect every single urban member of FCM to say, you know what? I'm going to go to the rural Alberta room and spend some time with those folks because they're going to be fun. They'll be interesting, uh, maybe learn something, and maybe make a friend. So I think that's what will attract a lot of people. No, I was gonna, just going to add to that. Like last year, some of the feedback we had from p members that came last year, they literally said, we didn't know that. Oh, I did not know that about Alberta. Um, and they thanked us for the event. They're like, that, that actually opened my eyes. Because they had just been, and I'm going to put a plug in for you, they'd just been listening to, quote unquote, some of the mainstream media that portrays Alberta in a different way. And they didn't realize it because they just, you know, kind of believed what was in front of them. And, you know, to me, the best part about this is, I don't want another Alberta person, I don't want Paul and I to be sitting there and talking all night. That That's a fail. We need to be working the room, we need to talk to somebody from Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, uh, the territories, wherever, um, and find those commonalities and build upon that. And I think that, you know, even someone like Ted Laking in the Yukon, he's very similar to us. I, I think he's, again, like Scott has always said, he's probably as much Albertan as, as the rest of us. Uh, Ted's right in that same ballpark as well. 
the conference costs a pretty penny to begin with. We don't need to go into that. But is this event free? Can anyone show up? What are the requirements to get into through that magical security guard to see this beautiful unicorn that is expected to arrive? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's free to anybody that obviously registered with the FCM conference. Uh, you know, members, um, not probably not vendors, but but the uh, it, it's open to that. And I think that it's an opportunity. Uh, we're going to have food and, and drink and. And uh, hopefully take people on a bit of a, a local food journey too. I was going to say, is it going to be locally sourced? Alberta? It'll be locally sourced. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, the facility we have, all their food is locally sourced. Anyways, it wasn't even like we need to use locally sourced. I said everything's locally sourced. <laughs> uh, so, and at the same time, I I want to showcase the Caesar, which is, was invented in downtown Calgary, at the Westin in downtown Calgary. So hopefully the Caesar's on there. I'm trying to have one of the Caesars named after Neil. So, uh, <laughs> and I want to call it like the comatose. So it's like a triple vodka Caesar, but I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I, I thought that was the paralyzer or the shaft. <laughs> that's right, that's I right. thought that's. I what think we were the going shaft on. is what we're doing. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So we have listeners from across Canada who listen to the show, who are active on FCM, who are municipal leaders. What's the message that you want them to go away from and say? You know what? Maybe I decide to go a little bit earlier to FCM. Maybe I book a day earlier for my flight, book a hotel so I can get to that uh, January or June sixth event that RMA is hosting alongside FCM or just RMA. Just RMA. Just, Just RMA. RMA. Yeah. So why should why should people come and book that extra day? Is it are we expecting to hear not just from the political leaders but potential stakeholders as well? Is there going to be people, industry leaders that are going to be coming and talking, or is it just a group of people who can just let down their hair? Sorry, <laughs> let <laughs> down your hair and just have a conversation before all the festivities starts with FCM the day after. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a soft sell. It's really you know us telling our story and not really pushing that much. Um, you know, I think that uh, I think it's an opportunity. It's June six. I, I would definitely say if you don't go, it's too bad for you because you missed out. Uh, I, I will not deny our, our event in, in Toronto was phenomenal and became, to be quite honest, was a bit of the highlight of FCM in Toronto. Uh, it was very well received. It was it was definitely worthwhile. And uh, and much to a combination of Henry V and Mr. T is, I pity the fool that is not there on that special day. Um, from FCM's perspective, Neil, you're, you're speaking with your members from across Canada. Yep. Are you are you hearing people wanting to come and get ready for this? So Absolutely. be there early and be there before the doors open so that way you can get a good room, space. Well, I mean, the, the capacity, if I remember correctly, is 800 people. Yeah. So I think we're going to have to cycle some people in and out. Um, and that will occur. I mean, I know Manitoba is having an event at the same time as well. So there's going to be people going that direction as well. Um, but yeah, the more, the more that come, it's going to be the in and out because we can't keep everyone there all night even though we'd love to we do have a I think six to ten is our time frame yes, in the range of um, but you know and and you mentioned earlier speeches I would think uh, you know we'll have Scott there I would think speaking uh, Paul likely will speak maybe Dwayne uh, please tell me it's not AI generated no it won't be <laughs> we've learned that haven't we oh I recorded that and that's gonna be airing right before <laughs> that. That's yeah, better, better jokes than, than those, those for are sure. Those bad jokes, jeez. Dad jokes all yeah. over again. So, showcasing rural in an urban setting alongside your fellow um, FCM members across Canada. I've got to ask the final question here before I let you gents go. What does rural mean to you? Paul? Uh, so, I've, I've had to define rural in the greater Edmonton area that anyone that cannot get skip the dishes. <laughs> Um, it's not like Scott said, you can't get a Tim Hortons. You can't get a Tim Hortons. <laughs> Much yeah, you could use the same thing. But, but I think that uh, I, anybody who's rural knows their rural. Um, and I think that, you know, you can use, if you use provincial designation, it's, it's 100,000. The, the, the stark reality is is that, that I think those that are rural that have a gap from access to resources have the ability to actually have some self-sufficiency and may or may not be able to see their neighbors from their house. Uh, that's definitely rural. But I think that it's also a feeling. I think there's a lot of folks that, that live in urban centers that are connected, uh, whether it's outside or in the outdoors. But just being connected with the land, I'd say, is probably the best definition. Yeah, and, and you know, you talk about like the urban people, there's a lot of people that don't even realize where their food comes from. Um, and, and you know, talk right now, water issues that are on the horizon in the province and food security, and they, they realize that if they're not watering their lawn every day, that water can go to irrigation or something like that. Um, and I think, you know, to me, rural is, as Paul said, my neighbor is eight miles away, but that's a neighbor. And 
rural is about helping your neighbors constantly. And so if we can do that as a rural member and help educate the rest of Canada, we're helping our neighbors. Last time, for anyone who wants to say it, what's the details again for the event? June 6th, at what time? June 6th, 6 to 10, Bank and Baron in Calgary. For sure. I look forward to seeing you both there, and hopefully it will be a fun event, and hopefully it won't be as packed. And I'm looking forward to seeing A, this unicorn, and B, this uh, uh, Caesar named after Neil. So thank you so much. <laughs> so much. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate Thanks, Chris. It. If today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from the municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations here on the cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on the issues. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy over the last year. Now, if you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, and as always, just keep talking.